Hello, this is a black and white video, so uh, you guys can see me eating my wonderful Lay's potato chips, right? Wrong! Carrot chips. Carrot chips. Anyways, my name is Will, and I'm the front man for Will and the Won'ts. Welcome to episode nine of our vlog. I tricked you! I said we were gonna conquer the internet by talking about Angie 2, but in fact we're gonna conquer the internet by talking about how to choose the right recording studio. My point is, don't let these crazy recording engineers try and trick you like I just tricked you and how they tried to trick us. I'm gonna start by saying that DIY bands like you and like us should have pretty much no interest in recording in the big name studios. DIY recording engineers and producers actually have access to software and equipment at such a reasonable price that it is unreasonable to believe that the big studios have a real technical advantage over them. They have better and more expensive rooms with great acoustics, but the reality is uh, with a skilled engineer that can always be worked around. You want your recording to have a little character anyways, right? And the reality is, I've heard some terrible recordings come out of Sunset Sound, and great recordings come out of somebody's basement. In fact, I I've personally recorded through a really high-end Neve console and got a really bland and lifeless result. My favorite recordings that my band has done have actually been done with relatively attainable equipment for the average engineer in Los Angeles, or really anywhere. In fact, almost every engineer that I have spoke to has the ability to make pretty professional recordings with a modest setup. That's just the reality of the recording world today. I think what it really comes down to is the personalities and talent of the musicians and engineers that you're working with. So I've had to come up with like a pretty comprehensive weeding out process. Um, a lot of it is really just intuitive, but I'm gonna go over a couple of red flags that I wanna share with you guys. I'll start by saying a lot of the information going forward and that I've already discussed is stuff that I've picked up from uh, a lot of engineers that I have worked with, including Danny here at Rev9. Number one, gear exceptionalism. There is no magic recording equipment. There are tools that engineers know how to use. Most equipment in a comparable price range sounds pretty much the same, and uh, any engineer worth his salt or her salt can uh, pretty much alter the sound to their liking if they know what they're doing. Two, accolades. You should not care who your engineer or producer has worked with in the past. You need to know how well that person will work with you. So many of my friends have been screwed over because they met some engineer that had worked with so-and-so on something and then they got their mixes home and they just sounded like crap. <laughs> They're a different artist. Just because someone worked with Katy Perry doesn't mean that your rock and roll record is gonna sound good. Also, just because your engineer ran cables on a Green Day session doesn't mean your album is gonna come out sounding like Dookie. Number three, personality. The most important thing is that you get along with your engineer. You're gonna be spending long hours in a dark cave with them, and you're gonna be picking apart your own creations. You have to like, trust, and respect them in order for that process to go smoothly. And honestly, that feeling should be mutual. I consider myself pretty lucky because my engineer slash producer is one of my closest friends. But the reality is we got that way because we started working together. If you're consistently turned off by some aspect of your engineer or producer's personality, I say jump ship before anything really catastrophic happens. You actually have quite a few options. You can even record yourself. So go ahead and experiment. Maybe get an engineer to work on spec for you so that you only really have to pay them if you like the results. Of course, you don't get the results if you don't pay them. So if you don't like them, you don't get the tracks. You'll actually be surprised by how many upstart producers are willing to do this with a little persuasion. The age of the internet and personal computing has opened the floodgates for great recordings. So go, get out there, take advantage. So do you guys want a tour of the studio that I chose? There's some gear. There's some more gear. There's some more gear. Speaker. Guitar. Guitar. Banjo. Guitar. Two guitars. Bass. Amp. Drums. Ugly chandelier. Pads. Live room. Mysterious hallway. Leading to cables. Yeah. Pretty much all studios are the same. But this one has an ugly couch. And a bunch of trash. Okay. I think I'll actually address Angie too in the next video.